Hi there, welcome to more breaking news within the Noah Presgrove case. Today we're going to be taking a look at new text messages revealed public to do with Kathy Bingham, the private investigator, and all that trouble that's been going around in recent time, and as well I believe some responses by Brooke Bounds Carter. There's a lot coming about today and the reason why it will be of your interest is because there is actual CCTV footage as well that's been released at the Caden Pressey's household outside where it shows Kathy Bingham present. So if there was anyone doubting the situation, whether that be that police interviewer that was talking to Caden and maybe questioning him to do with the event of when Kathy Bingham came on round to show the highway video of the shorts being removed, it just so happens within that CCTV footage, you catch a very vague glimpse of what was on that phone, what Kathy was showing. It might seem like a lot to take in in the moment, but don't worry, we're going to go for it bit by bit. And to start off with, we'll be on Facebook with the text conversations, what Kathy had to say, I guess, in recent time about Caden Pressey. Uh, the, the interview and anything else. We can also catch up with some comments to what the public think. But what I just want to take a quick time now to say welcome to those that are currently here in this live premiere. If you are watching right now, feel free to share your thoughts in the live chat on the right hand side of the screen. And at the end of this video, if anyone has questions, any additional thoughts, leave a comment down below under the video and we can respond back at a later point. You'll also find a pinned comment by me with additional links if you do want to support this channel. Shout out to those last night, I believe it was Cleo. Big shout out to Cleo. Shout out to Skeptical in recent time, Vanessa too, and anyone else in between. And furthermore, as of last night, I believe it was based off timing. Shout out to another individual elsewhere in the background, such as PayPal. You know who you are, much appreciated, that's all good. So with that being said, if you are just simply interested in catching up on previous videos that I've uploaded to this channel, top right corner of the screen where the eye symbol is, if you click up there, you'll find the playlist, all the videos, and the videos that I've done either today or yesterday, they'll all be there to watch. Now, without further ado, let's get straight into this on Facebook and look at the breaking news. Here we are, so seven hours ago by Michael Facecast. Let's see the caption first. Does the video lie? You be the judge. Look closely at the screen of the phone Kathy Bingham is holding. I'm adding three videos, the original one, zoomed in and very zoomed in. Does that animated screen look like a still image to you? So this is interesting. As for the video, I will play it to you. Don't go anywhere, I'll do that shortly. We need to look at the text conversations first. I will zoom in myself. I don't know if we need to edit the photo or enhance it anymore, but if I do a narration over the still shot, maybe I can mess around with and see what we can get out of it, right? But it's just good that we're able to get hold of this footage because there were questions of, did Kathy truly go round? What was actually being shown? Some online, I can't remember who exactly, were saying, well, you know what? It wasn't actually a video. It was a still photo of something completely different and it wasn't that big of a deal. Is that so? We'll be the judge of that when it comes to what's static, stationary, and then what's movement-based because a, uh, a photo doesn't just like move about back and forth. It's very interesting because I'm sure I could make something out of that video when I looked at it myself. More about that later. Does the animated screen look like an image? I added screenshots from Kathy Bingham just so she can't say she denied sharing them a video. I was not going to do this until Kathy doubled down calling Caden and Alicia liars. I think it's more important to protect their credibility than that of Kathy who has lied to me, the public and the people who hired her as a PI. When you say the people that hired her, you mean what, no, Presgrove's family? I mean, the family's, I guess, been quiet on this. I've not really seen anything, so unless they're dealing with it in the background. As for Kathy, uh, did I see Kathy call Alicia and Caden liars? I can't remember, personally. I don't remember seeing that exact word unless it's mentioned in a text conversation or a screenshot elsewhere. Of course, in recent time, it came across as if Kathy was doubting the innocence of Caden Pressey. 
who saw that post of, oh yeah, you go down to the highway, then you get back to the house, and then you just sit there and watch TV. Is that normal and you don't call family and stuff? It seemed a little bit unfair that because Kathy was questioning Caden and not doing the same for Bryl and Sweat or the others that straight up went to sleep. Why do they get a free pass but Caden doesn't? So it tied in line with that leaked interview which wasn't meant to be public and then, you know, Kathy Bingham hearing about it and possibly getting a bit annoyed, frustrated with her name being brought into everything even though she's here for a reason and your name is supposed to get brought up and pulled into things especially when you're in a certain role a critical area of the case it's just what comes with it and I guess the responsibilities but why would Kathy be a bit reluctant there about certain stuff and maybe play other things off or play it down a bit maybe because they don't want to get attacked they don't want to be a marked target but then there's other questions people doubting in the community thinking that maybe they're playing for the other side batting for the other side come across as they want to help, get involved, help the innocent, or supposed innocent, and then it backfires afterwards, so then they can go elsewhere and then relay on in other locations. I mean, at the end of the day, it happens online, right? Like you think of drama, you think of conflict, it can come about when you've got a spy, an informant, comes on in, Discord group, Facebook group, a chat, whatever, gain people's trust, act all nice, listen in, get screenshots, do whatever, piss off, and then show it to the opposition. It's just like in war, it's no different, it doesn't change. So, with that being said, we probably should look at the photos. Now, apologies in advance if they don't show up clearly. Um, sometimes it's clear, other times it's not. I think this will do for now. I'm going to try zoom in if possible. Thankfully, it's in the middle of the screen. And we're just going to try and understand what the hell's going on here. So, Kathy, active one hour ago, and this was Friday at 8.44pm. Does that mean Friday just gone? Or the Friday before that? This is very likely to be in 2024, because if you didn't know, when it comes to like messenger apps, especially Facebook, it will only give the year if it's dated a year back or longer. If it's present time, present day, it won't give the year. It will just give, I guess, the day and the time. It's a shame it doesn't mention the month, though. That would be pretty helpful. Nevertheless, um, so whose perspective this from? I believe it's Michael Faze, Kaz on the right, and then on the left in the grey boxes is Kathy Bingham saying hello. Uh, the other person says hi. And then Kathy says, I've got a question for you. Ah, is this like the beginning of everything? Was this posted privately before or after the public post by Kathy Bingham on one of the Facebook pages, whether it be the case discussion one or the army page, and then that was deleted and then supposedly she left one of the groups as well? What the hell? I know there's a lot going on, but what's this question to do with? Kathy says, have you heard the recording of Caden Pressey? The recording of Caden Pressey being the interview that took place in June of 2024 with the police, the private one, which was leaked in recent time, which is kind of unfortunate, of course. So why is Kathy asking this question? The guy or the person says yes. And Kathy says, what do you think about it? I wonder why Kathy is so interested in what this individual has to say about it. Has this got anything to do with these cross connections as in in the past when it came to receiving information or intel about the highway footage and what it was all about? I wonder. I mean, in the past, we were concerned or thinking, you know what? OK, you've got viable evidence and items. You've got to hand it over to the police or the LE or the OHP, whatever you want to call them. Is it being given to the right hands or is it in the wrong hands where they could just get a hold of it and then delete it, alter it and ruin it? But maybe all along, the hands it was in in the first place or partially was a danger already. I mean, you get a hold of it and then where do you send it to? Oh, reluctant to send it into police? full on send it to the place or mm, maybe I will maybe I won't or maybe I'll share it with the people that have been caught within it such as those in the footage I don't know depends I said these are like some theories and ideas along the way I just want to be careful with the language and wording hopefully you understand now this person responded said I already knew everything Caden said he was trying to be as truthful as he could now me personally what I heard in that interview I wasn't aware of everything that was said previously before that. Some of the information I heard first time round, timestamps as well, kind of threw me off a bit, trying to understand it. The days, Saturday, Sunday, Friday, the crossovers, it was just a bit 
of a mess, in my opinion, but still. I've got to keep up with that. I've got to do a map analysis. That will come later. But what does Kathy say there in response? Well, to a point, I know he straight up lied about me and I don't know why. Wow. So what was mentioned in that caption about Kathy calling Caden out as a liar? This is what's being mentioned right here, right now. And that's quite shocking. A private investigator that has come on in free of charge to try and help people, to help solve the case. And now straight up calling out Caden publicly, but also in the background too, calling him a liar. And yet when it came to online in that Facebook post, she didn't directly say Caden's a liar because that was to do with other themes and other topics, but she was careful with her wording and language there. But here, she seems very confident and certain in the background that Caden is straight up a liar. But what about, what did Caden supposedly lie about in regards to Kathy? Will it show on the other page? Ah, uh, there we go. So it's what we just saw before, but I think we get to see more of it. Yeah. Well, to a point, I know he straight up lied about me and I don't know why. The person responds, why would Caden lie about that? About what though? Lied up about me. What, the whole situation lied about you turning up to the house or, or and showing footage of the highway? Kathy says, I don't know, but I did talk to him two times and his mum once. Right. In terms of the footage, what we're going to look at, the CCTV footage, there appears to be Alicia Lee and I guess the husband with Kathy Bingham, Caden, nowhere to be seen in that little bit of CCTV footage. Anyway, I find his statement to be pretty accurate and Kathy says, can I call you? It's easier to tell you. And they say, because it matches up with a lot of other corroborating evidence. Can't talk right this moment, but I'll message you with kids, okay? What else do we have here? Right, okay, so the issue what Kathy has about Caden lying, supposedly, is about the video. And Kathy says, I never had a video. Kathy Bingham saying that she's not got any video footage of the highway, uh, the situation of the police guy pulling the black shorts off Noah's body and I guess maybe replacing them, but that video doesn't exist, or at least not in the possession of Kathy Bingham, yet Caden Pressey has stated himself that that's what he saw, the footage and the details within, and it was Kathy, the one who passed it on and showed it in real life, and Kathy's saying, nope, that's a straight-up lie. I mean, why would Caden Pressey be lying, and especially in a private interview when, you, when no one's eyes are really on you at the time, What's the whole point lying about that whole situation and lying about Kathy then having this or that? Or is Kathy trying to backtrack, backpedal now because it's come out public? So it's like a form of damage limitation. Instead of you having all the blame or the heat, you can't put a spin on it and say, no, 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 it's not me. It's just that person. They're not thinking clearly. They're not thinking straight. Oh, they don't know what they're talking about. You know, just ignore them. It's like minimizing the situation because something big has come out. That, that's at least how you could interpret it. The person responding said, I'm 100% certain that the video is real. I'm also 100% certain that Noah was murdered. Now, as of us, like witnesses, do we have true video footage of the supposed highway scene of the tampering with evidence and the shorts being pulled off Noah's body? Have we actually seen that footage? Most of us haven't. I haven't. Do I have possession of the video? No. Has it been shared to me? Nope. Will it ever be? Likely not. But there might be the odd person in the background that has seen it. As for the one that originally recorded it, who knows? Now, Caden Pressey said that Kathy Bingham supposedly believed that she received the footage from one of the truck drivers at the scene. So maybe the truck driver, one of which was recording it at the time. And ever since... Maybe they've gone quiet, anonymous, anonymous profile, whatever, because they don't want to get attacked. They don't want to be brought into it. So you record it, you document it, pass it on to the right people, and those right people are then supposed to pass it on to authorities. But supposedly that hasn't turned out well. But then the one who's got the responsibility of passing it on is backtracking by saying, there's no video. I don't have it. There's no video at all. 
Does that mean there's no video out there? There's no evidence? So all that hope that's been built up with time all for nothing? Well, let's not just jump ahead just too soon because does it mention anything about any photos though? And Kathy says, I never showed him anything. See, we've got to be careful with the language and wording because I need to just be careful here. The footage, what we're going to take a look at, does appear to show Kathy sharing some kind of media with the parents of Caden Pressy, but not with Caden present in the footage, at least. So, all I'm saying is, Caden saying how Kathy came round showed the footage, the footage, evidence, to Caden, and Kathy is saying that never happened, who's telling the truth? If we were just to say vaguely, and I know Kathy isn't stating it right now, but if Kathy simply said, I never went round to Caden Pressy's household or the parents, and in general, I never showed any videos because there's no video, I never shared anything with them, well then that would be a straight up lie because there is counter evidence to prove that she was there and she did show some kind of footage media. Now whilst up to now Kathy hasn't said anything about any photos or screenshots, other people online have. I don't know if that's because that's what they truly believe in or the delusional or they're part of the problem, who knows. But in terms of the footage, the CCTV footage, it does appear to show not a photo but a video. Does it mean it's the video of the highway? Who knows, because it's not exactly clear, but it's definitely a video. And the context behind it all, I guess Alicia Lee could provide it herself from her point of view. At the end of the day, a private investigator has come on down to pay the Ken Pressy household, family, whatever you want to call it, a visit for a particular reason. And having multiple phones on the table, do you normally do that when you go to places? No, but maybe the certain role or job you have in life and in the moment of a particular event, you might have multiple items to share things. Who knows? So this is a bit problematic. So Kathy is saying, I never showed Caden anything. And in the footage, what we're going to see, Caden isn't present. So that comes across as somewhat true, but uh, Kathy definitely shows stuff to the parents at least. Hopefully people understand what I'm getting at. I'm being careful with language and wording because a person could be lying, but in a way, depends how specific they are about a certain claim. Anyway, in response, this person says, I'm just trying to understand why you would go to their house to show them a screenshot from a still frame of a video that's already public. The video that Ace Lee was trying to enhance. Ace Lee? Um, I think I've heard that name once or twice, but that was to do with the party footage, debunking it or enhancing the audio in the background of when Brylan Sweat slapped Noah and Isaac was in the background holding the gun, trying to work out what was being said. And then people online got suspicious of Ace Lee and a lot of people called him out. Weird times. Never really got into it because I was busy. But anyway, what's mentioned here? Something that the video is the something of anyone's problems. No clue what that means. What else do we have here by Kathy? Yes, it did happen. At least that is why he told me. Wait, what? So that did happen. I was starting to doubt it. And did he say he was injured or unconscious? Kathy says, I don't remember exactly. Would have to go back and look at my notes. Wait, what the fuck? We've gone from one thing to another, jumping about like a kangaroo. Skippy, what's going on here? Hmm? Let's try again. Why do you go to their house? A still frame of a video that's already public. What video is already public? Because I've not seen it. Is this the reference to Partners in True Crime where a video was shown at some point? It's ironic how that's probably just the particular video that I've not seen, but I've watched the others. Maybe I'll have to go back myself. So is there some kind of misunderstanding that a public video is relevant to the case, but it's not the be-all and end-all of what's been claimed it to originally be. But it's a messy situation, and in regards to this, something did happen, and this person says, he was, was, he, he, well, and did he say he was injured or unconscious? Who's he? 
Who's he? Are we talking about Noah being injured or unconscious? I suppose murder? Kathy, I don't remember exactly. We'd have to go back. Did he tell who hit Noah first? Oh, wow. I'll check tomorrow. My brother-in-law just died and we have been doing the funeral. Sorry to hear that. And how many times his body was moved before they brought him to the highway? Moved multiple times. Is that like a form of desecration in a way? It reminds me of the Dylan Rounds case, the possibility of killing the person, well, in that case it was, and then temporarily burying them or moving them out of sight and then later deciding to move them on. Hmm, just reminds me. Any more screenshots? Right, so this is the video. This is obviously very critical and important. I think people have waited long enough. So you've seen the mentions here. We'll just go over it one last time before I just play the clip, right? I don't know. Um, not about the video. I I never had a video and I never showed him anything. But she did have a video and she did show it to people, just not Caden from the footage. Let's roll the video right now. Anyone and everyone watching in the background, present live, lock in right now. I'm going to play the video to you. Maybe play it once or twice. Listen closely. There is audio as well and hopefully you can hear it clearly there seems to be some kind of confirmation of their reaction to watching the media once that's done i'll probably have the footage on replay over and over again as i narrate over it as i weigh in my thoughts on the situation let's begin So, hopefully you can see it on screen. I'm going to explain what's going on. You see that little red arrow pointing? That's what you're supposed to be focusing on. That's the screen of the mobile phone. Granted, it may look blurry, but that's because we're zoomed in. If you wonder what that green flashing box is on screen, it's not a glitch, no malfunction. It's that motion capture from the CCTV camera because there was like a square box or a rectangle around Kathy Bingham. I don't know why it was only on her, but maybe that's what motion capture does with surveillance. Nevertheless, I've zoomed in. This is my edit, in case you're wondering. Michael Facecas did his own, and it was very well. I mean, at first, I didn't know how to do it. I zoomed in as much as I could. It wasn't good enough. I did it in the, the editor. What I did, I just went into the gallery and did it that way by default, and I zoomed in a lot clearer and close up, right? I enhanced the photo to make it clearer meaning the background is much darker, but it brings out the light more. And just the contrast of it, the shadow effect, so what you see on screen is a lot clearer. Now, I'll be, I'll be honest with you, what I see on screen doesn't ring highway, doesn't ring shorts being pulled off, but this is only three seconds worth of footage in which Kathy flips the phone to Alicia and shows it to her. And then Alicia Lee says something about, oh yeah, and that's law enforcement, or that is a law enforcement whatever. And then Kathy said, yep, that's what I thought too. It sounds like it's confirming that whatever is in that shot is to do with a law enforcement police guy, maybe officer, you know, the one we we're talking about removing the black shorts off. Now, who knows how much of length of footage was available. We only saw a little glimpse. So where do we start first of all? Well, on the far hand side of the left, I think that might be the table. Take in mind the angling of it isn't directly facing us because they're sat down, the camera's pointing down at them, the phone's on its side, so we're looking at it slightly with a tilted head, kind of like what I do in my videos when I'm talking, and I don't really pay attention to it. Some people did. Anyway, you're looking at it kind of like from an angle. Now, 
first and foremost, I can't say that is the highway footage because it's not clear enough. But what I can say is, with a level of confidence, is whatever type of media that's been shown there towards Caden Pressey's parents, Alicia Lee, and I'm guessing the husband, Caden nowhere to be seen, at least in this short you know, span of CCTV footage. I don't know if a chair was pulled out. I don't know if Caden was elsewhere doing stuff and then returned back to sit down with them. I didn't see that personally. So when Kathy says, I didn't show the video or I didn't show anything to Caden, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I don't know. But it seems very clear and for certain that you did show something to the parents and that didn't seem to be acknowledged. So you could still say Kathy comes across as a liar themselves, which is a bit hypocritical, whilst calling out Caden a liar. In general, simply talking about, I've got no video, there is no video, there is no footage of any of that sort. Well then, why are you showing this to the parents then? Oh, but we don't know what that footage is. We don't know, you don't know what that footage is, where you've just basically confirmed it then against your own claims, that what we're looking at is a video well, we're breaking down the fourth wall. We're looking at a video, editing a video, looking within a video of a person showing a video to the parents, even though the person claims that they don't have a video, even though they're there showing a video. Short story is, when you look at that screen of that mobile device, it looks dark. It looks like, what, night vision, thermal, kind of like when you look through a scope. It's very white, it's very bright, but you can clearly see the outline of a human moving to the right. I'm not sure if they're like ducking down and standing back up, but they definitely seem to move. I can see movement and it looks human-like. Now, at the end of the day, if the original statement by whoever was, it's just a still screenshot, that's all it is. It's a photo, nothing more to it. It can't be possible. If you're looking at a photo, if you're looking at a screenshot and you're not manipulating the screen, you're not doing a slideshow, you just got a static photo on screen, on standby, not doing anything, it will not move whatsoever. What happens if you've got a GIF or a GIF, which is like um, an animated photo? Well, that would be an exception because it's like a photo slash video, but it's still technically a video anyway. And you probably wouldn't have a GIF to begin with, because the quality tends to be a lot more downgraded. It wouldn't make any sense. You'd be better off showing a small portion of a video instead of a, a GIF-generated low-quality one. So at the end of the day, what appears to be shown from Kathy Bingham's phone or Endless Phone Collection is she has video footage of something which is likely relevant to the Noah Presgrove case because why else would you come round to Kane Pressy's household with the parents to show a video, Right? Is this a particular video that was shown on Partners in True Crime, meaning it's not a big deal and it's not actually of the highway or the tampering with the shorts? Who knows there? But I think what we can confirm is one is present, one is showing a video, even if no video out there exists, like Kathy claims, Kathy does have a video. It's as simple as that, right? A photo does not move, a video does. And in terms of what I see on screen, and I know it might be hard for some people, but all I can say is, you rewind back, you saw where that little animated red arrow was pointing on that screen. Uh, like It's like horizontal, but the phone is vertical, which is kind of amateur that, because normally what you would do, you would rotate the phone around to get a full screen. So, Kathy Bingham, got to keep up with it. But in all seriousness, you'd rotate it around. Um, but yeah, it doesn't like human movement. The last time I did an analysis like this, because I do have extensive experience with enhancing and cleaning up photos and doing what I can and giving my thoughts with the Kenny Beach case, the Dylan Rounds case, and the Riley Strain case in Nashville. Is it Tennessee? Just Nashville, whatever you call it. I'm not an expert when it comes to the US, am I? But, well, certain areas I might be. But still, when looking at that type of stuff, on replay, just so you can sink your eyes in and I can show you my thoughts and we can keep going over and over again just to look 
at it. You can clearly see movement. It appears to be a human, but why are they really white? Is it because it's so dark out there? Well, it would be dark early hours of the morning. It would kind of reinforce the situation with Caden's timeline to an extent, but actually go against Jack Newton's, who was claiming it was light. It was bright by the time people got there. I mean, this footage must... Well, apologies in advance if I'm wrong, but this footage... If it was to do with the highway and the tampering of the shorts, it would have to be after 5.30 in the morning, but probably before 5.43. I know it's such a small time frame, but I'm just basing it off the truck drivers, the second set, Tyler and Tyler Hardy, that said when they came on down to the highway and passed by, or at least one of them did, the other one parked up, they saw no one present at the scene of the body. So whoever else was there beforehand moved on quick. And as for Caden Pressey, who was there from 5.20.21 to 5.30 when told to leave with the guys, Noah was wearing black shorts from what Caden could remember. So it would have had to have been after 5.30, then things happened. Four people supposedly in shot. I believe one, Caden said, Bub Wilcoxon. And then another one, a Newton family member, but then Caden said he couldn't quite confirm that. So it was a bit uncertain there, which is unfortunate. But there was um, a police guy, an officer or so, that was removing the shorts. Very interesting. Now, in terms of where they went after that, who they were passed on to, back at the house or a backhand job elsewhere, that's very interesting. Because whilst it's important to look at the footage in the moment, what happened after that point? Because in the end, Dalen Presgrove did receive those black shorts, which were tampered with, but he wasn't aware of it at the time. What happened in between it, the process? Were they taken off the body because they needed to be taken care of and cleaned, but no attempt of disposing or burying, which is a very unique situation. Considering that Noah's hat was nowhere to be found, Noah's other Adidas shoe was nowhere to be found, Noah's shirt never really returned from what the family have said, the wallet as well missing. Missing items like that, where did they end up and why were the shorts specifically removed after the death, supposedly, and why were they taken off and... Where did they go then after that point, supposedly? Because they were passed on to Dale and Pressgrove in the end, and partners in true crime said the shorts were damaged. How bad? I can't... Oh, I don't think they really said. Was the tears and rips? But why would that be? Because of the death of Noah? Or the tears and rips because of the ATV side-by-side -side flip over, roll over? I mean, if, from what Kane said, Noah had damage to his nose, bleeding nose. So... There could have been other forms of damage done too. And it's interesting how Jack Newton was saying, oh, no harm done. It was just an accident, which in other words, an incident from what he was getting out because there was no damage to the vehicle, no damage to Noah. Oh, just like arguments, there was no harm here. We hugged, we made up, we did the Titanic scene where we hold our arms out on top of the boat. Yeah, but is that a lot of minimising? Manipulative, self-manipulative, minimalization, external manipulative, minimalization. These are terms which I've created. You'll have to go back to my channel to understand or pick up on that. But it's like where you play down the importance or the damage or the impact or the achievements of something or someone to reduce the heat levels, damage limitation, basically. So if it applies to the arguments, oh yeah, Saturday, no big deal there. Oh yeah, Monday, not even going to mention it anymore, but we'll gloss over it with Logan was the last person to see Noah wander off. Oh, is that so, Jack? But why are you only mentioning it now? Why not back then? Add into the story, trying to confuse, who knows. But as for this highway footage, or supposed highway footage, mm, very, very interesting. But I can clearly see movement, and I hope by now you can too. I did take in consideration to mute the video so you don't hear any talking uh, from anyone else. You don't hear any noises, because from the TikTok video with the door closing and shutting and kissing and whatnot, I think it traumatised people. And as well, when Rene Milan was... Uh, beating or hit the, is it sheep or ram on the head with a baseball bat on TikTok? Mm. I mean, I, I'm, I'm guessing it's not a normal thing you do, and I'm sure people would have reported the video for um, animal abuse, right? And, you know, TikTok, they don't do anything about it, do they? And yet when I upload a video of a game, a video game, not breaking any violations, or I upload a video of uh, covering a mystery, a case, okay? I just simply show my face, I breathe, I talk, and the video is taken down for breaking guidelines. 
what the hell is going on? TikTok treats me like shit, right? TikTok needs whipping, you know, uncontrollably. And we'll get to that someday, sometime, I guess. Just as a heads up, in case anyone's wondering why I'm not active on TikTok as much, it's because, well, there's a lot to do, right? It's it's enough on YouTube, but on TikTok as well, it's a bit much at times. Furthermore, though, more importantly, it's because TikTok can only allow you to upload videos up to one hour long. Way back in the past, you could only do 10, 15 second clips, then 30 second, then one minute, then two minutes, then five, then 10 minutes in recent time. And now, very recently, it's gone up to 30 to an hour, which is crazy. It's good, of course, but my videos are a bit over one hour long, one hour 10, one hour 15. So I can't upload my videos and I can't edit it because it will take too much time and it will miss out key information. So when I do a video and it's short enough, I'll upload it to TikTok and YouTube. Other times I'll just stick with YouTube in case you're wondering. So with that all being said, by now you should be able to see on screen, there appears to be movement. This is a video. We're looking at a video of a video. Kathy Bingham says she doesn't have a video. And she didn't show a video or show anything to Caden, but she is showing a video to the parents. And I think that's important enough, don't you think? So let's now head on over to the comment section on Facebook to see other people's reactions. The first comment is by Sherry. I'll go on to all. This is my opinion, just a thought ran through my head. KB. Who's KB? Oh, Kathy Bingham had three phones on the table, clear to see, yes. Maybe the phone she was showing the video on belonged to her step-grand-nephew, whoever he is, whatever relationship he is to her, what, Brian Sweat or someone else, maybe possibly belonged to him and she was trying to protect him. Because think about it, Kane Pressy said Brylan Sweat and Mikey Lair swapped places somewhere in the time frame of 2.42 to 5.15. Yes, so maybe he was there and videotaped them secretly and she got his phone. Didn't say, didn't she say he came to her for help? I don't know about that. So put two and two together and there's where your video came from and she might be holding it to make sure he doesn't go down for what took place. Also, she just said it came from a truck driver to keep the suspension elsewhere. That's just my opinion, okay. I mean, if it is protecting someone looking out for brown and sweat, family um, conflicts of interest at the end of the day. I don't see why Kathy would come on down to Caden Pressey's family and stuff and show the video to Alicia Lee and husband and think that that's okay and no one else is going to see it or uh, put it elsewhere. But it, at the end of the day, if you've shown it to someone else, then clearly it's not a conflict of interest where you're protecting someone within the case because you've already shown it to someone else. And that someone else would have the expectation of you then sharing it onwards, forwarding it to police or someone else. Um, that's my response. What are the replies, if I can find any? Uh, give me a second. Jerry agreed. <laughs> Jerry agreed with Sherry. Jerry Sherry <laughs> agreed. Except according to her, Kathy Bingham, it was her grandson who asked for help, who is a cousin to Noah. Is that so? Brylan Sweat is supposedly her great nephew by marriage. So really, a situation like that, private, private investigators shouldn't be tied with families. It should be like separate individuals without too much emotion connected just to work on the case and do what needs to be done. And it seems a bit of a messy situation here. I know Justin Roy relayed on from what the family said in the past about three private investigators. We've heard of Kathy Bingham. What about the other two or the, uh, the three others? Uh, where are they? What are they doing? Are they, is it more formal, the procedures? And what does the family think of Kathy Bingham? Sherry says, okay, I, I may have got mixed up there, but I bet it was Brylan Sweat. And also, if it was him, I just about bet he also recorded what took place secretly. It's on the same phone. Why would it be told she keeps that phone in a safe deposit box? Again, just my opinion. Maybe possibly Ken and Pressy recognised the phone on who it belonged to, and that's why he said in an interview he didn't know if it meant anything, but Brylan Sweat and Mikey Lair swap places in the night, well, no, it was actually morning time, early morning. Just a thought there, in my opinion, but I'm totally on Caden Pressy's side. He is Noah's hero. Right, moving on. Sharai says, yes, good on you for exposing the BS, Michael. And the BS does not mean brown sweat, but bullshit. Vanessa, got your cafe. Hope everyone sees this. 
well, maybe this YouTube video will spread a bit more awareness. Laura, thank you, Michael. Maybe now we see movement. Ideally, it'd be good to see what the family think. Kathy Bad Bingham. Kathy Bingo Hall Bingham. You go straight to jail, girl. Don't collect 200. Hey, give me your Maserati. What's that all about, Vem? Wait, is this something to do with... I don't know if it was around the anniversary, the one-year anniversary of Noah's death, but a couple of different people who were like kind of associated within the case or connected with those within the case were getting like new cars all of a sudden. Where, where would they get the money from? But you can't tell people or question them how they do things and what they spend it on. But just the timing of it, it was a bit random. And I think maybe Kathy Bingham got a Maserati or something. Not that it's really important within the case, but maybe some people are sceptical thinking, oh, has this person been paid off so now they've used that money to get a brand new car? I mean, that is jumping ahead. It's just a theory, an idea, that's all. Tiffany, I know I shouldn't laugh, but that was funny. Maybe it's just a joke, but still, I do remember some photos of people buying new cars. Laura, civil asset forfeiture uh, could be attached to Mexican Mafia, also known as drug running all funds go. They have a set up camp in Oklahoma. I think something about gangs, cartel, mafia, oh no. I mean, it could well exist, but I don't know. It's just when it comes to the Dylan Rounds case, all about the cartel, drug dealing, Dylan Rounds saw a deal take place. He was silenced because of it and then disposed of in the desert. Kenny Veach, missing hiker 2014. In a bloody abandoned place, desert, desert National Wildlife Trust, whatever you want to call it. Um, Mojave Desert, Little Jermay Canyon, 50 plus miles away from Area 51 North. But by the way, could have come across a drug cartel. Yeah, you're going to get a fucking Mexican guy called Juan on a donkey. Hey, Taco, I want you to have some fun. Here's some drugs. I'm counting them on my mule. Oh, very nice, isn't it? I love the tacos, the music playing in the hotness. Such a great time. Come mi familia. Oh, Jose, come on in. Let's have some fun. That kind of sounds a bit Asian, that, but at the end of the day, who cares? Yeah, that didn't happen in the Kenny Veach case. It didn't happen in the, uh, in the Dylan Rounds case. But what did happen is I've debuted a new accent and impression. Mexicano, ole, arriba, arriba. And I'm sure people are going to be like, ha, yeah, Raph, we're going to boot you over the wall. You try that, man. I'm built like a tower. I'm heavy as a concrete block. I'm not going to be moved. Anyway, in all seriousness, is there any kind of dark stuff going on in the Noah Presgrove case, like when it comes to groups, associations out there? Who knows? Um, with me personally, I don't need to look into it at the moment. Oh, we've got Tuesday, closer by the day, Tuesday. I hope all of the doubters see this. Caden and Alicia have always told the truth. Caden is an honourable and great young man. I'm so proud of. What did she say he lied about? Well, Kathy said it herself within the text. Laura, basically everything. The PI working for Noah's family whilst in possession of the evidence that solves Noah's murder. Tick tock, bingo, bangum. Whoa, Laura. Whoa, Laura, influenced by the uh, warlike ref terminology there, bingo. But as for bangam, that's a new one. Bangum, bump ass. All aboard the train. But, in all seriousness, in terms of possession of evidence, just to my knowledge, okay, and what we've heard of from what Ken Pressey said in that interview. Kathy Bingham in possession of the highway footage, which shows foul play, tampering with evidence. But does that mean to say that those within that footage, the four individuals, are the same people to have killed Noah in the murder footage? Not exactly. I think it's different sets of people. Correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't hear anything about Kathy Bingham with the murder footage as well. I didn't hear that from Caden, at least, in the interview. But from what Laura says here that Kathy has that too, or at least that's how, how it's interpreted here. If we're only talking about the highway footage and it shows external people clearing up the mess of some of the party goers, let's just put it like that, it doesn't solve Noah's murder completely. You need two lots of videos for that full jigsaw puzzle to be completed in the moment, the present and after. 
you know, like how we do before and after, kind of like that. Hmm, awful, but she'll wear orange soon. Hmm. I mean, at least from what Kathy was getting at herself within that text conversation is that there was no video or videos, more so worded as a video only, and that never showed it to Caden. And yet Caden is saying that he was shown it by Kathy. In terms of the CCTV footage, Caden wasn't shown it by Kathy, but Kathy did show it to the parents and maybe the parents showed it to or described it to Caden. There's different ways of looking at it. Depends how it was worded at that time. Jamie... Well, now people will believe Alicia and Caden spoke the truth in us as well. Michael arrest after exposing this will definitely be imminent, thankfully. I mean, there doesn't seem to be as much disappointment at the moment. With the Dylan Rounds case, you had a, some people very confident, claim to know this and that and evidence, and then it ends up falling flat. People get disappointed, then it happens again and again and again, and then you don't really expect much after that. This time round, it's been a little bit more consistent. Things talked about. Not exactly fully reinforced in terms of physical evidence because we just can't see it publicly. But it hasn't really been debunked either. So that's it's still there up for discussion. Michael says, The same video Kathy is showing Galicia that shows Noah's body on the side of the highway as his shorts are being removed by Ellie, staging the hit and run with many known players in it was given to the OHP trooper Zachary Wright in October. Does all of OHP know he has it, or did he keep it for himself or delete it? Just wondering what else they need. See, this is what I was saying. Maybe not at the time because I wasn't present. But, yeah, October. You talk about October 2023, correct? <laughs> but either way, if it's taken that long, like close to a year or so, depending what date you start off with, close to a year and not much has happened. What more do you want? Maybe enough has been given, but people just aren't willing to accept it or move forward because it either involves them or involves people that they know. So such as with authority, they don't want a bad image, a, re a bad reputation. They don't want it to get out public or maybe they care about others or other ones are associated with. One could pull down the other, drag them down. So it's kind of just like on hold. I mean, besides murder footage video and the possible cover-up, the shorts being removed after that, you know, you put them aside, what else is there? What else do you need? What else do you require? Oh yeah, to go into a time machine, to travel back to the time of when it happened, to physically watch it unfold, and I bet even that wouldn't be enough to convince the key people to take action. So when it gets to that point, then you're basically in the ship. And that's when, I guess, um, how do you word it without it being interpreted bad when you need more other forms of action? I mean, with the Dylan Rounds case, there was some evidence along the way, some vital stuff, and it felt like things weren't being sped up or weren't going on quick. But in the end, it did happen. And it worked out. But then there was the difficulty of, well, where is the body, though? Can, can we find that? And it came down to the murderer of Brenner having to open up himself when he wanted to or when he needed to. And then, yeah, it did happen in the end. But still, during the presence at the time, um, it just felt a bit hopeless, or at least that's what the family felt. But then some kind of action online, people, was it the state of Utah, the courts, sending emails, messages and all of that, some press as well, negativity... Maybe a bit of that kind of got the alley a kick up the backside to move a bit quicker, maybe, because in the end, the family were a, lit, a little bit more satisfied with the Ellie after everything that went on earlier. That was more so a case of incompetence and, I guess, trying to protect their own reputation through mistakes made or just just being incompetent and trying to cover that bit up. They weren't 100% corrupt, more incompetent, in this case, unfortunately, it might come across as more corrupt. I mean, you got the evidence. What more do you need? And to be fair, let's just say, on the basis that the highway footage is true, that the murder footage, if it really does exist out there, is true, pin it both together, that's pretty much solid, hard evidence. And if it actually shows you know, the voices, the faces, the people present, that's pretty much case close and you know, justice and boom, there we go, good. Just not happened, has it, really? Ashley Chadwick Robin Smith said, Partners in True Crime, that 
FBI aren't assisting, they're not getting on in. But if at some point there's like news, there is a breakthrough, there is a new lead, thumbs are given up, green light, then the FBI will come in and assist. By now they should have with this supposed evidence and yet they haven't. So what more is needed? Maybe no more evidence is needed because enough has been provided. Comes now, it comes down to now whether the certain authorities want to bother or not, and looks like they don't want to bother. I mean, if you had weak evidence, you could just play it off and say, well, you know what, maybe it's just not good enough for them. Maybe we need stronger evidence, hard-hitting stuff, really clear and identifiable. But, you know, if you're at the top of the ladder, top of the mountain, and that doesn't work, that's not good enough, no positive outcome, you can't look any further up. You're at the summit. You can look down, but all that is not as significant. So what more can you do? I guess that's why it comes to maybe general public or summit somehow supporting the case or, or like spreading awareness more so of the, the problems, the issues, and then maybe some of the um, news programs or... Was there anything about a documentary within the Noah Presgrove case? I mean... It's interesting, with partners in true crime, they said that they were going on down there for a week or two, whether it be interviewing people, learning about the location and other humans to present. And I think that was a part of the actual documentary, I believe, unless there was another group out there too. We saw it on Facebook at the time, documentary being recorded, people coming on down with cameras and stuff. Well, what's happened to that? Is it still going to happen or not? Let's just see. Laura says, oh my God, awesome. Can't stop crying. Wait, do you mean that in a positive way or bad? Normally when you say awesome, you mean that's good. Let me just reread out. Is it negative or not? Video cafe showing of the highway. I wouldn't know for certain because the footage wasn't clear or identifiable to say the highway, but it was definitely a video from the looks of it, which goes against what Kathy said or what some people said online about it just being a photo. So that's important though. Hit and run. Um, given to Zachary Wright in October. Um, is it October yet? I'm not even aware of dates and stuff anymore. Is it September or October? If it's October already, I doubt it. It would make sense. It's 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 brand new. It's in the present now, 2024. But I don't think it's October yet. So the only other October would be 2023, way back then. And we look now. Well, not much has happened. That's not awesome. That's not good. Unless something else has happened. Does all of the Oklahoma Highway Patrol know he has it? Hmm. Yeah. I mean, if Zachary was the one to personally receive it, did he want to share it with anyone else or not? I mean, that's worth questioning. I know I keep saying this, but surely if the FBI were given this video, they'd surely have stepped in by now. Rita says... Which leads me to now understand why Caden kept trying in September, October to get in touch with Mr. Zachary or anyone who would listen to him and give the statement about what he knew. It took him weeks of trying before anyone would even get back in touch with him. Then, after this interview in October, nothing. After his interview in October. Wait, are we talking about this private leaked interview? Because that's been stated it happened in June of 2024. And then there was one before that, I guess, in October 2023. Julie, thank you, Michael. Hope there was a copy of that video somewhere. I did not get why so many lies have been told to discredit Caden and Alicia. Why would you do that to them? I thought everyone was on the same page. Justice for Noah, obviously not. Truly breaks my heart that people can be so damn cruel. Definitely a video. A complaint needs to be filed against her and a PI license revoked. Got to imagine the Dylan Rounds case. That sad deal when you can't trust the LE or PI. And so I don't think a PI should be going around showing people evidence she obtained. Not ethical. Yeah, especially to anyone within the case. Could have implications. Robin, she needs to publicly apologise to Caden and Alicia, in my opinion. Or turn herself in. There's a few things that just don't sit well with me that I find very odd. Let's see... Why is number one, Kathy Bingham repeatedly denied she has the video or seen it. She even said on Partners in True Crime she didn't have it or see the video. The reaction of the two men when Caden told them Kathy showed him 
and his parents the video. Wait. The reaction of the two men when Caden told them, are you referring to the private interview? I wasn't aware that there was two men interviewing Caden. I thought it was one guy, one police guy and Caden himself. I could be wrong. But I'm sure when Caden was talking about it, Caden said that Kathy came round to the house and spoke to Caden and showed the video to Caden. I didn't hear really any reference to do with other family members or parents, but nevertheless, in that CCTV footage, whenever that was, it does show Kathy at the place. And Caden did say he's, there is proof to his footage to show that. Well, in that footage, it didn't show Caden from what I could see, but it did show the parents at least, and it did show that video. Number three, Kathy getting expensive car. Was she paid off to destroy all the evidence? Just asking. Yeah, I can't remember when it was. Was it near the anniversary or before? Where Kathy Bingham and some other person, maybe a party goer, bought a new car from the same exact car dealership? Maybe, maybe not. Does it matter what people do with their money? Not really, but maybe some were just sceptical because of the timing of it. And if you do get like a nice car, you might be thinking, oh, you know, how did you get a hold of that? Not that you should be that nosy and asking all the questions, I know, but I don't know. It's like you've got a private investigator. They're doing a case free of charge, right? Are they, are they spending all the time doing it or doing other things on the sideline? Because if they're doing a case free of charge, but they're putting a lot of time in and they're quite busy, but they still managed to get a new car, you think, oh, where are those funds coming from elsewhere? I know you shouldn't question people too much in life. I get that out of respect. But sometimes the timing, the coincidences, you could be a bit, you know, questionable or question the people, I mean. Number four, why is Oklahoma Highway Patrol still the lead investigator when it's clear this is a murder case? Is the OHP protecting a few local LA? Hmm. Why is Oklahoma Highway Patrol still the lead investigator? Murder case. Is Oklahoma Highway Patrol protecting a few local LA? Um, not too sure. I mean, when it came to the Dylan Rounds case, police agencies, it was like a handful of different police involved there. I've not looked too much into it within this case particular. I've not seen the keywords or names. In the Dylan Rounds case, you, you obviously had Box Elder County, Box Elder County Sheriff's Office, the main ones, but then you had Weber County, uh, some other group, and then another group as well, and there were high up authorities. So, um, yeah, I mean... Mm, no, I can't, I can't really think at the moment. Number five, in my opinion, there's a lot of crooked stuff going on in the investigation. JS, what does JS mean? This is just what it looks like to me. I'm not accusing anyone, I'm just saying it's very strange and it doesn't add up for me. Admins can delete this comment if they need to. Number six, what it's going to take for the FBI to take this case over. I just think they should be the lead investigator, in my opinion, to me, this case is way over. Right, so do you know like when I said, what will it take for action to be taken? And I said, well, what else can you really do? You've got the hard evidence. You're at the top, summit of the mountain, supposedly. You can't go any further. The next best thing that could happen, and this would be a complete joke if it went wrong, is if the killer or a group based on the murder theory, if anyone is responsible, came on forward and said, yeah, I'm responsible. I'm the one who did it. Or a group came forwards. Something like that. Direct, confession, public, honest, whatever, done natural. Would the authorities be willing to take that person in? I mean, <laughs> I don't know at this point. I mean, you could probably possibly rob a place in an area just to highlight the, the stupidity of the situation. You could rob a bank. You've got money hanging out of your pockets. You've got money stuffed in your ears and mouth. You've got all white powder around your face because you stole some donuts, which were uh, injected with cocaine. And you say, yeah, man, look at me. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'm going to hand myself in. And if they said, no, we're not going to take any further action, you'd be thinking... What a joke. I mean, what more do you want? Do you want the cocaine yourself? Do you want the donuts? Oh, maybe if I stole your donuts, special police donuts, then uh, there might be more action taken. Fat ass! What are you doing with a donut, man? Laura. Yes, to all member daughter getting on here, yelling Kathy has her own money. Yeah, right. 
Oh, right. A member, what, on this actual page, the army one, that Kathy Bingham's daughter was calling people out. Hmm. Would you need to yell or do you just ignore it? Maybe if you need to defend yourself, you could just say, hey, you know, our own money in the background. Yeah, I get it. Shouldn't be crossing on over but the time and the coincidence of certain stuff. Sometimes you can't help but question. Provided it's done in an appropriate way. Laura, she needs to go to jail. Her mom passed and she inherited her estate and money. Right, Tiffany. How are you so sure that she didn't turn the video over to the LE months ago if it does exist? Maybe there's a reason she isn't speaking about it publicly. Right. So you're implying the small chance and possibility of whether it be privately or publicly stating that, no, nope, there's no video, nothing there, nothing to see, minimalise it, go against the supposed truth to help the investigation, like the Dylan Rounds case where the gun and the key fob information, critical evidence was revealed publicly, a mistake made by the LE when entering it on the NAMUS database at the time when it should have been done on the private police record one, but it was done publicly. So then Kenneth Cooley supposedly was ordered to go against the truth and lie publicly. So it made her look bad. It made look her look dodgy, but it was done to try and save the case. Could that apply some way here that uh, a mistake made or someone done with intent of leaking that important interview audio so then Kathy backtracks on herself to protect herself or more so to protect the case? See, that's just an alternative way of looking at it. That's all. But especially if you truly trust certain people and you're communicating in the background, maybe you wouldn't need to keep up that performance. You wouldn't need to lie there. Only public where you might go against the truth. But then, if you want to convince people real well, you might do it with close contacts as well in the background as well, maybe. Anyway, so you refer to it. This whole case as a shit show and has been handled poorly by everyone involved. It's standard procedure to not release this kind of information during an active investigation. For one, to protect the integrity of the case if one is being built, and two, to protect those in possession of incriminating material evidence and information. I'm not justifying her behaviour or defending her whatsoever because I don't think she should have been on the case to begin with. But I'm also not real sure what she do turn herself in for. She hasn't done anything illegal to my knowledge. But see, when I think of it, someone said Kathy Bingham came in, was it September or was it much later on? I'd base it off, it's important to know when Kathy Bingham became the private investigator and helped within the case. Does anyone know the exact year and date and month that would be helpful? Because Caden was saying how three days after the death of Noah at the party house, a possible scene of interest, Kathy was there for three days after that, watching people clean up the house. I mean, maybe if you're a private investigator, that's what you would do and maybe you could blend in more if you are related to certain family members within the case. You don't stand out like a sore thumb. No one would know. I get that. Yes, it's a conflict of interest, but at the same time, you can blend in a lot better. But still, let's just say Kathy wasn't assigned to the case at the time, then what is she doing there in the moment to help? or to take things into her own hands so that in the future, when the time comes calling, she could step up and become that private investigator for that case. Who knows? Chaz. And it, just a random question, because it's like done pro bono, bon, bono, was it? Pro bono, pro, pro bono, bono, give a dog a bone. I don't know. But was there any contract signed? Does that happen? Did Kathy Bingham sign a contract within the case or what? Who knows? Anyway, Chaz flabbergast me that a private investigator would flat out accuse Caden and his mum of being liars and deny having shown them the video when there's footage of her showing a video to at least Alicia. Yeah, it's quite shocking. You'd think the PI would be doing all she can to expose this case for what it really is, not accuse someone of lying. They're not. So if you see patterns and trends with other people within the case making straight out lies and literally being called out with hard evidence to counter them, well, that's what's happened with Kathy Bingham. Has it, has it happened with Jack Newton to an extent with the sleeping situation? And it was based off a, a counter witness report in which Ken Pressey said, well, at that time I was just about awake or I was about to just go to sleep, but I noticed Jack was awake and alive and okay. And Jack's saying, well, I went to, ta went to bed at this time or earlier. Clearly not. But in this case, 
this time round, we actually have video footage. We actually have CCTV cameras that actually work and not the high-tech CCTV cameras at the party house. Don't even work. Yeah, right, man. But these CCTV cameras did work at Caden Pressy's place, or Alicia Lee's, you know, the Pressy family, whatever you call them as a, as a collective unit. But the cameras, or a camera, showed what was happening, and it could be used to counter Kathy Bingham. That's what you need, hard evidence, which is publicly available, to counter possible lies of others, or supposed lies. What are these people doing? What's their point in trying to keep this covered up? Do they really dislike Noah that much? Good question. I just don't see it, unless Noah did see too much, as I suspect. You know what the problem is? There will come a time where it's true. You saw too much. You saw something what you weren't supposed to see and you dealt with after. But at least in my opinion, when it's come to cases, ones that I've looked at, the theories floating about with Kenny, with Dylan. Oh, saw something, wasn't supposed to see. Wrong place, wrong time. You know, things like that. And did it turn out to be true? No. Christine Passe Parker. Oh yeah, saw something that we weren't supposed to. Did that happen? No. Dylan Rounds? Nope. Not at all. Kenny Veach, unknown of. Let's put it that way. Just seems as if it's being taken seriously because I've been seeing it as these people aren't actually fighting with all their might to bring justice to this case. If no it really mattered to them, then why aren't they giving it all and have to prove these people's guilt and get them behind bars? Then we march forwards. That might be what's needed. I just hope she gets what's coming to her. Makes me sick to my stomach. Okay. Still worried that they'll still try to frame Caden or someone else knowing these evil monsters. Mm, okay. Michael, that would be very uncalculated and idiotic on whoever did. The entire world would be outraged. I mean, the attempt, the, the idea of doing it makes sense only because it could be one against all or at least the minority, which is Caden, against the majority. And obviously, when you're in smaller numbers, just like a war, a battle, an army, it's a lot harder, isn't it, on you. Defending yourself upon an oncoming wave of darkness, the force of it, everything. It just clouds over you. It can, it can be too much. But still, there's been battles in time where... A smaller group of army have been able to fight off a, a, a massive wave. Uh, can I think of any on the spot? Well, what about, um, oh, what is it now? Battle of Rorik's Drift, where you had the uh, British or the English army. Um, was it in Africa or South Africa? Um, uh, basically, Rorik's Drift on that, like, that little base. And then, uh, was it 4,000 plus Zulu warriors charged at them? And uh, the 200... English soldiers held him off and was successful. But then I think days before that, you had the, the Battle of Isawalanda. Isawalanda! Where there was, was it 50,000 Zulus or something against 3,000 English soldiers with like Gatling guns or cannons or rockets. And they got completely overwhelmed. It, it just came down to the tactics, the strategy of defending and firing, and timing, and positioning. If you can get the battle strategies correct, you can win against the odds, if that's how you word it correctly. Will that apply here? Who knows? But in fairness, you look at the justice page, I think there was like 62,000 members, and then a few thousand on the other pages. So there's more than enough people, in a positive way, for something at least, the Dylan Rounds case, um, was it like fifteen to 20,000 people onwards? So in this case, in a shorter space of time, 62,000 plus and counting, that's even uh, bigger, to be honest. But no press conferences, no press releases, am I right in saying? That's disappointing, just like the Dylan Rounds case. What else? Me too. I've been worried about that, and now they're really going to be desperate and may feel like they have nothing to lose. They need to arrest them already. What she's trying to do with a post that she deleted... Hmm. Backtracking on certain things. For the life of me, I don't understand why the FBI hasn't taken full charge. Right. Sharai. She should never have come for Kadem. World's dumbest criminal, Kathy Bingham. Justin Roy. Ah, there we go. That's interesting. Justin Roy makes an appearance. 
Not going to elaborate, but LE has had this video since October 2023. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Confirmation or some kind of reinforcement. 2023. Enough time has passed by, hasn't it? If that video is true, and what's within it is very like incriminating and it shows before and after, that should be enough. And yet it's not. Technically, it, it should be enough, but if those within are being awkward, what can you expect? I've just been waiting for the arrest this whole time and have been floored that there hasn't been right. But apparently more going on that initially thought, in my opinion. Is that so? So Justin Roy is some interesting comment here. Let me know your thoughts in the chat, what you think, Shirai says. It's interesting that the investigators that interviewed Caden seem to be completely surprised at the video's existence. If it was shared in October 2023 and this interview took place in June 2024, Hmm. So, not that I'm blaming Caden, it's not Caden's fault, but was it a good idea for Caden to let those the police guys or whoever know about that footage? Because if they're dodgy, could they then put a target on Caden's back as well, just besides the general public? Justin Roy says, exactly, that was the huge red flag to me as well. Like, how did they not know? Someone not passing over the information. So I think it was Michael earlier saying that it was passed on or it could have been passed on to Zachary Wright who may have kept it to himself and not told anyone else for it as an example that could link on with Justin Roy's point here possibly or they were flawed that Caden Pressey knew about it that's another good way of looking at it you know they were like what no you're kidding me you don't even piss me off how do you know this is critical information that we know of now, how do you know? And who else knows? This could actually harm the case. So that could be another form of concern. But still, the, the way they were going after Caden, and Caden explained where it came from, and yet they were still being critical on Caden, I don't think the uh, cared as much. Hmm. I don't have it with a huge problem. From what I've seen and heard, they knew, but they didn't know Caden and others knew about it. That's one way of looking. Shirai says, yeah, they didn't sound too happy that Caden had seen this video and they hadn't either. They're pissed because their dirty cop buddies were hiding that from them or pissed at Caden for knowing about it. Justin Roy, I hope that's the case. But then again, if so, what in the world is taking so long? Heads are going to roll finally and careers will be over and more families ruined. I may owe someone for favours done for me, but no favours done would ever make me part of a murder cover-up. Corrupted Ellie is part of the problem, like I've been saying, and the cover-up belong in prison, which is why I said from day one. Now the case is blown wide open for the entire world to see. In Kathy's part in true crime interview, Kathy said she had to go back and finish up all her notes she has taken in the last 11 months and turn them over to the LE. I asked myself then, why in the heck would she not be giving LE information as she got a hold of it instead of holding it onto everything for those 11 months? Yeah, a live surface of giving updates along the way, just in case anything did happen in between. Yeah, that live communication would make more sense. I think they were surprised that Ken Pressing knew about it from the transcript of the interview one of the detectives said, not that this is the first I'm learning about it, so he knew it, it existed. Okay, well, I didn't look at the transcript. I don't know where you would look for that transcript, but okay, if it confirms another voice in the background or overlapping the other one, then yeah, more than one person, authority in the room. Interesting. Tiffany, I think they were more so surprised that Caden had knowledge of the video and that Kathy of all people showed it. It could affect the integrity of the case. Yeah, I get that. That's another way of looking at it for that balance. They were pissed at Ken saw it. Kevin showed it to him. I think my think she's trying to lie to cover her own ass now because it's backfired. Domestic cat, a PI from a crackerjack box. Ridiculous. Yeah, there's good reasoning ability here, in my opinion. I think we've seen most of the comments to what I'm aware of. So what we can do now is head on over to the Brooke Bounds Carter conversation, if I can find it. Right, 19 hours ago, Michael Facecast, this is to do with BBC, not the news programme, but as you see here, 13% battery. Oh my God, Michael, I hope you've got it charged to your phone now. But I'm in no position to speak because my phone's been a bit flat today. Non-stop action, right? But this is Brooke Bounds Carter, you'd be familiar with by now. Um, a long-time friend with Stevie Howard, kind of regarded as a family member, but not by blood. So there is a, a link there in grey, I think, by Brooke herself. Don't know what that link is, really. HHTTPS, 
cdnwhatever.com. I have about six more of these just off screenshots Caden and Alicia posted, whatever that's about, and another post down there. BBC dossier on Alicia and Caden. Is this like another thing against Caden and Alicia in a negative way? A counterpoint, kind of like how Kathy Bingham has been, I wonder. Can't read that because it's too blurry. BBC says, why are you so worried if y'all are only telling the truth and facts? But why is it with the crying, laughing emojis? I mean, at the end of the day, if BBC was in a dangerous situation or annoyed with how the case has gone or cares about Noah, but also is frustrated with the opposition, as in the majority, then BBC shouldn't really be using crying, laughing emojis because it just seems like more of a game, a little bit immature, okay? For most part, these, most of these humans are fully grown adults and mainly developed, but their presence online is a bit backwards. In response, this person says, just cover up the bases, not scared, prepared. Why are you creating dossiers on people who are witnesses in a murder case? Laughing at admins trying to protect group members from libel lawsuits. Oh, is this in connection with Michael Faye's Kazanat post, what we looked at yesterday, where things were under siege? What else? Seems you dedicate a lot of time not looking for truth, but more derailing it. Brooke says... What dossiers have I created? Y'all point a lot of things towards me, yet never show anything. We want the truth, but always having to wade through y'all's bullshit, made up drama and lies. Y'all just want the drama. Y'all don't want the truth. I'm glad. Finally. Okay, we've got the ass. We've got the bumps along the way, but we don't have the y'all's until now. Good. We've got a return of that. And before anyone has a meltdown or panics, don't worry. When you say yowl, doesn't matter what bloody country you come from, it will sound the same exact way. Even Sharai agrees with what I'm getting at. This person responds, why did you say you know the truth, then delete that message? And BBC says, no, if you had a brain at all, you would know something, something, something. Didn't quite see all that. Oh yeah, because it says Brooke unsent a message. Interesting. Brooke writes, we know the truth, then immediately deletes and says, we want the truth. Yeah, that seems a bit of a slip up, if that's the case. Lol, now you want it, but you know it. I thought, why? We know Noah was hit on the highway. Everybody does, but y'all. Everyone does, but y'all. Doesn't make any sense. If you say everyone, that means 100% of people within the case in the community all agree with the same thing. It's like saying, 100% of people like kangaroos, but you, on the other hand, don't like them. You prefer spiders with cotton wool. But you've already stated that 100% of people like kangaroos, and you're saying that one percenter, or whatever percentage, prefers spiders dressed with cotton wool. You, you're 101% wrong. What the fuck is going on there? Get the statistics right. Language and wording... Of course, in the moment, you're not going to be specific. It's because at times I'm an awkward bastard with language, right? But I'm not always perfect either. So I do see it from both sides. But still, it's a bit contradictory what's been said, okay? Brooke says, wish y'all would put effort into that then trying to go with murder, lol, seeing as the OSBI doesn't have the case and not investigating it as murder. Not inv investigating it as murder... But at the time, she said it's a homicide vehicular situation. So what, like hit and run. So not murder, but still a criminal case, right? Can we at least be in agreement with that possibly? Mm. I mean, from like how I heard it worded across all over the place, and even in news articles that it said police ruled out hit and run. Even Caleb Newton, Jack Newton's father, said in the statement on Facebook that the hit and run was ruled out, but a beating as well was ruled out. And he was told that by the police. So what does Brooke Bounds Carter think of Caleb Newton? Jack Newton, the son to Caleb, seems to be like a cheerleader as for the fact of some kind of vehicular incident, accident, vehicular hit and run. Stevie Howard is in agreement with that. 
Brooke bounds Carter is in agreement with that. And yet Jack's father, Caleb, said himself on Facebook that hit and run was ruled out by police early on. Does Caleb believe in that? Weird, isn't it? So even maybe opposition, there might be some cracks within or disagreements. Anyway, that's why RHP and the medical examiner said there's no way it was a hit and run because everyone knows, uh, huh? As well, the actual cause of death in the official uh, report said unknown. So it's not even for certain hit and run. Even the, the supposed experts aren't claiming that. And yet members of the general public believe it's a hit and run. Well, some of them do. Weird. Brooke says, I think Yal might truly believe Yal own bullshit, which is scary. That means Yal get to vote. So now we're going political now. Tell me where they said that. And uh, this person said, Trump 2024. And maybe in four whatever years time, it'll be Raf 2024, president of the US. Huh. Show me proof. That's right. Proof will be shown at trial. Laughing my ass off. Again, zero proof as always. I don't claim to have all the answers. Now, Brooke Bounds Carter at one point, I guess, pr tried to provide evidence to suggest that a person that was supposedly with Caden, which Caden claimed to be with at the highway, wasn't there. It was at 5.25 or 5.27 in the morning, actually still at the party house with the girls, and it didn't quite time with Caden Pressy, and that's what Brooke Bounds, Brooke Bounds Carter was getting at. But the Snapchat was of the timestamp and not the actual photo selfie, so... It was half done, half arsed attempt of proof, which is very unfortunate. At least an attempt was made, but just not good enough, in my opinion. Oh, this one. Is this Michael's point of view? Because he's gone down to 12% now on the fair. And oh my God, Michael, living on the edge. you got to control this quick. 12%, it'll be 1% in no time. And don't speak on things you can't show proof. I'm following the information that comes in. Some may be BS, some may be legit, not for me to judge. I'm not, I just don't believe it was just a hit and run, in my opinion, lol. I know there's a lot of effort trying to disprove murder and make it hit and run. Why? It's obvious to you. Um, if, if you trust the process, then trust it and stop trying to silence people and build cases against them. In response, Brooke says, I'm not trying to silence anyone. Never have, but falsely accusing people of murder is wrong. All about freedom of speech. Want to call me a bitch? Get over it. But publicly making people out as a murder is a different ball game. Yes, you get what's coming to you, which is why you and Justin are now realising about y'all have it coming. Y'all nervous. Nelly's now. The Nelly? God damn Nelly, man. Cowboy. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. See, it's just like another silly, funny situation with these emojis. Not like a... I mean, has Brooke Bounce Carter been serious before? Maybe in that... That threat towards Noah's family. I mean, what was that all about? Was that needed? Now, uh, I'm not going to call Brooke Bounds Carter a bitch, but let me just make one thing very, very clear. If anyone calls me a bitch, it's going to trigger me, and then I'm going to start barking like a dog, okay? It's happened a few times now, in the past. I, I don't know what's going on, but... <laughs> I'm sorry. Did someone just type bitch into the chat? <laughs> well, like Raph is one, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, this is what happens. Any more name calling, and I'm going to be barking non stop. Yeah, Sharon, not just you in the doghouse. Looks like I am as well. Funny using George's verbiage now. Who's George? I don't know. Or is it yours he's using? Fortunately, I've never accused anyone of murder. Just said no, it was murdered. If you're conscious and making you think it was aimed at you know people you know, that's on you. George, your old buddy Justin said you were nervous Nelly. You don't think we have numerous screenshots of you accusing the kids? I have whole file for you and that sweet wife. Oopsie, wrong person. Oopsie, wrong person is the same line Brooke Bounds Carter used when it came to that screenshot of that leaked audio link or something. Brooke says, no, if you had a brain at all, you would know that was on purpose. Ah, little reference there to saying, and I picked up on it. So don't worry, Brooke Bounds Carter, I do have a brain, okay? I've got a big head. Maybe the brain doesn't quite fit it completely, but I did pick up on it at the time that... The oopsie, wrong person, was actually meant true. Kind of like, if you had a pair of melons 
you sent a photo to someone and you thought, oh, I just bit my lip because I'm anticipating such a naughty reaction because I shouldn't have done that, but really, I, I, I really did. I really meant it, yeah. And then that supermarket will say, great melons! Let's advertise them and put them on sale because they're the juiciest ones in town and they will perform very well and sell out. So yeah, get a contract going. Get the melons, get the muffins, get the carrots, get the vegetables right now and as well the fruit. Let's be clear about that. So yeah, oopsie, made a mistake. Not really. Yeah, I picked up on it at the time. All under control. Comment wise, we don't need to spend too long here, but Stephanie Bacon who has an appointment in the doctor's room at some point. In my opinion, she's a clown. She also sounds like she's threatening you and your wife. Freedom of speech. Why even engage with her? That's exactly what she wants. She feeds off of it. In my opinion, a lot of lawsuits against the whole world. Money talks. Okay. Hit on the side. We all know he was with fractures. I don't even come close to a hit and run. Mm. Who he's an attorney for a crime they didn't commit. Just sent you a preamp. Okay, this is from the case discussion group. I have responded. I don't know what that says. Loud, louder milk. What, you're like, louder, louder. I want milk. Give me my milk. Feeding time. I'm not, yet. well, whatever. We'll get to that another time. It's just because I don't want to lock in too long, just because of timing and everything. So my opinion, very interesting day. We've actually some hard evidence, a better understanding today, a better control a better grip of things as as like what I said, you know, from yesterday, which was a bit of a messy video just because of the situation being messy. Yeah, documenting, archiving. But this one, more under control and a little bit more original. Does it lead to follow on videos? We'll see with time, but there are still ideas to do. I just wanted to cover this because it is kind of breaking news and it is important. So hopefully you found it interesting. We're not just done yet because in a way, putting aside Noah Presgrove, okay, I should put that aside now. There is one last thing to do, which no one was ready for. Hey there, man, you know who I am. I've made an arrival, a debut on Warlike Graph's channel. I left a few comments in recent time, but I've seen a petty individual trying to recreate me and there was only one bump ass, man. There's no one that combines themselves to me. I am bigger than the whole world, man. Have you seen the size of this? It's humongous, bigger than an asteroid. You see, I don't think anyone matches up to me. You think? I don't think so. You know, sometimes it shifts about a little bit. I've got to push it down because it keeps pushing up, but I think that's pretty good. See, it might be a little bit see-through, but that's what's happened. The bigger you are, the tighter it is. And there's quite a lot of size within this. But I am not going to allow anyone to get a piece of this, man. Even if I am elsewhere. Even if I drop that soap, I got the soap in my hand, I drop it down and I'm supposed to bend down and pick it up. No, no, no one, no one is touching this. I need to come on over. See, I, I don't know how things work here. Uh, you look at me when I'm talking to you. Yeah, this is the normal default facial expression I tend to have. Yeah, dude. Uh, sometimes I take photos and selfies in the kitchen area. I want to show on off. See, my height may fluctuate at times from the doctor's appointment, even though <laughs> I don't want to go there. I don't want no medication. You get it for me. I ain't going down there anytime soon. Someone else can do it for me. But when, I, when, I'm, in the, when I'm in the kitchen, dude, and I'm uh, on the countertop, I might look a little bit taller. But you know exactly why. It's because the ass is clinching on to the edge. It pushes me up a little bit, okay? I can't push these up back in control of areas, man. And I don't even know it shows up because of the way the camera is. Does it even show? Pretty much. That's what it's all about. You see that? How many people have a size like that, man? It's massive. You can really get a good feel of it. And by the way, do not try this at home because no one is like me. I am the ass. I am Assatron. I am the, the creator of bumps and asses. So you know how this actually happened? I, I need to tell you. The reason why this happened is I was actually in a car, okay? Maybe run over some animals here and there, but <clears throat> who doesn't? But when I was... Uh, so I'm just a little bit confused, official expression. Something missing. Anyway, 
When, when, when I was driving, I actually drove over a speed bump and it bumped my ass so much it made it swollen. And it's never been the same again. It's been absolutely humongous. But it's opened up a new load of opportunities. So even though I've got a bump in my ass, it worked out in the end. But I don't think the same can be said about other people. Because let me tell you something, there's a range of people, my shirt's getting stuck on the chair. Hold on. There's a range of people that are questioning my intelligence, okay? I, I, I don't know what other, other people are trying to do, okay? Some people are trying to impersonate me. <laughs> you cannot impersonate the ass of all asses out there. You cannot, you, you just can't do that no more, okay? I don't need no bionicle ass. I'm not Optimus Bumpertron. I'm not Ultron. I'm none of that. I'm a real person with real feelings but no sensitivity because it's gotten real numb down there. But maybe it can be activated once again if someone gets a good grip of things. But this is the thing, whether I'm on a bump, I mean, whether I'm on a bus with a bump pass and a bump pass and ass, doesn't matter. If I'm in a damp situation, if I'm a trash, tramp, trump, tramp, ass, dump individual, I'm gonna get dumped. You, you need to listen one thing, dude. I'm not dump ass. I've never been dumped before because who would turn down this massive, I am in front of me. I, I can't even stand in shot. Who would actually turn that down? I've got to be careful there. Well, who would turn that down, okay? All you petty individuals might. Um, by the way, okay, those that have tried impersonating me, creating fake accounts, I'm going to be suing all of you, okay? Because we ain't done yet, okay? We need to level the tone a little bit because I'm sick of people trying to impersonate me. How dare you do that? You are not me. You will never be me. You don't know what it's like. You don't know what it takes to be such an ass out there. You know, when people see me, Jack may be jacking off. I mean, jacked off, pissed off. Doesn't matter. When you see this, or when you turn around, everyone's going to be surprised anyway. And it's going to remain like that forever because you don't even know. You don't even know, man. You don't know what it takes. No. No. No, 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 no. Have I just gone flat? Let me check. Let me check. No, no, it's, it's falling to pieces. My ass, my ass is falling to pieces. This can't be true. No way. How much more have I got down there? Give me a second. I need to reach around the back. No, there's absolutely nothing. There's, there's, <laughs> No, no. I'm going a bit red on the first time. What am I gonna do? I'm a flat ass. I'm a dump ass. I'm a trash ass. Oh no. I mean, it's probably time for this. I can't even do it no more. I actually had a song prepared, you know, to highlight how great I am and <laughs> I can't do it now, but I guess maybe in the moment for good time's sake. <sighs> what am I gonna do? You know, at the end of the day, somebody once told me I got a massive ass. I got it from a bump on the road. I don't know how to drive a run over animals every single day. Well, the years stop coming and they don't stop coming up, walking to a shed and bump ass running. Doesn't make sense if you don't have fun. You drop the soap in the prison and get a good time. So much to see, so much to do, and it just keeps on coming. The ass keeps getting bigger by the day, and so does the bump of my head. Hey now, I'm an ass star. I've got it blown up. Go play. Hey now, I'm gonna sue you if you try and make names. No one's gonna take me down because I'm already on the ground. Well, that's a pretty waste of time, isn't it now? I'm not an ass star no more because I've got nothing on me. I've got nothing left to lose. Or maybe I've got something to gain. Oh yeah. You know what I'm talking about, Miriam. You know who I am, but I know who you are. Little pink default profile, real cute, yeah, home girl. What are you gonna do about that? Are you gonna try and clap back at me? That ain't happening. Because I heard Miriam, but it's getting to that time of the month. And when it gets to that time of the month, it's time to get ready, isn't it? See, this is the thing, no one understands what I can do, okay? And I'm hoping that everything else is in place because what do I have? Yeah, Miriam, come on, show me. 
Yeah? Bitch, I don't care what you say. It's time to paint the town red. Come on, Marianne. Paint the Eiffel Tower red. Rouge. Yes. Sorry, is, is, what is that? Tastes like Miriam. What's that all about? I don't know. Maybe I can paint my face just a little bit to remind me of what I don't have. I've been caught red-handed. I've been caught red-handed. Don't, don't send me to jail now. I got no ass to clap back. What am I gonna do? I guess all I can do is just use this for now. There we go. I don't know if this is permanent or not. <laughs> As if I'm gonna be seen in public with a flat ass. I'm the dumper tram. I'm everything going and I've lost everything at the same time. Miriam, I'm disappointed, but actually I'm impressed at the same time. Your brush making skills, your brush, how it collects all the redness, the purity of it, as it brushes across the face, a magical art piece. Thank you, Miriam, thank you. And it just happens all along. Well, some other people were doing some kind of investigation on others with hands, caught red-handed. Seems to be the case this time round. And this is, this, this is, I've got Miriam's DNA on me now. Up close. Imprinted forever. Anyway, I don't care who you are. All I care about is my ass is in pieces now, all over the place. I'm never going to get that back and much more. If this stains, so be it. I'm out of this. I'm done with the shit. I don't even know how to end this video because I, I've got no way to touch the screen. Give me a second. This is this is not a blooper. This is real life, man. Never gonna get this back. I'm out right now.